It's time for the Skyhawk Coaches Corner, recorded live at the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum. Hello, welcome to the Skyhawks Coaches Corner. I'm your host, Bob Bonner, recording live this week from the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum. Our show presented by Centura Health, and this week we're joined by head men's basketball coach Bob Petrack. Riley Ferris will be on the show later to visit with me as well. We're going to go ahead and jump right in with the coach. So, uh, season coming up on November 21st, South Dakota School of Mines, the team you picked up win number 100 against last year. Um, tell me a little bit, are, are you excited? Here we go. A lot of uh, A couple months ago, we didn't know if we were going to have basketball. Just we're getting close now and knock on wood. Very, very thankful to uh, have an RMAC schedule and be playing. Uh, Nick's super excited for the game. Uh, they have a brand new team. We have a lot of returners. Um, and we got some we got some new guys we got to mix into it, but I feel really good about where we're at uh, considering uh, the summer right. and it just was abnormal. But feel good about where we're at, feel good about where our team is at and uh, I'm excited to just start and compete. You know, when you've been off as long as we have and uh, you get things taken away, you become more grateful mm -hmm. uh, for the things that you do have. So we're, we're grateful just to be playing and have the opportunity to compete. It's very special to be part of a team. You know, you, you, you know, with the way uh, the virus has worked and you, you start being isolated in your own area, it's very special just to be part of something uh, and be part of a team. And, and that's something that we've all taken away. Our team is really focused on just how special it is to be, be together uh, and have a chance to compete as, as a group. You know, that's kind of a nice take, Bob. I, you know, I've throughout the fall and in, in speaking with various coaches. And it's on my part, I'm, I'm asking them about the challenges of COVID. Sounds to me like you guys have kind of identified an opportunity there to grow uh, a, a little bit and become more unified as a team. So at the same time, there were challenges to COVID. Um, you know, what were they? You guys, what, what did you overcome to, to come in, get together, to start practicing? Right. The, the biggest obstacle for us right now is uh, we didn't finish the, the year off mm -hmm. very well last year. And we're so determined and hungry to get back and just want to play. Um, and then the virus hit and there's nothing anybody can do about that. So uh, instead of being able to be together in the summer and have camps and be together and start momentum towards uh, the season, we, we were isolated, you know, so everybody's with, with themselves and you have more time to think, uh, you have more time to ponder, you have more time to reevaluate your goals, uh, look at yourself, look at other players, do the same and say, what can I do to help when we come back? So I felt when we did come back that uh, we have a, a, a good group with, with uh, a one common goal, and that's just to be a lot better than we, we were last year. And I think that's very doable with the pieces we have. You know, you talk about Mines is going gonna, is gonna to come into that first game with a lot of new guys. Um, you know the feeling. Uh, first time I yeah. met you last year, you were talking about with a couple of exceptions. One of them is going to be joining us here in a few minutes in Riley. You guys put out basically a new basketball team last year from the one you, you'd played with the year before. At the same time, I remember last year you saying, I like this team. And at the end of the season, after disappointments, I remember you saying, I like, I like our basketball team. Coming in now year two, uh, they know you, you know them. Um, one, I'm assuming you all still like each other. And, and two, uh, what does that mean as far as positives for this year? That, yeah. that you guys have got a year under your belt. Going back to last year, so we pretty much rebuilt our team heading into uh, last season, mm -hmm. and no one can anticipate injuries. Right. And we had some injuries at, at at key spots that made our team even younger than it was. Right. <clears throat> so you look at our record, you see 13 and 15, and that's well below our standard, and we know that. But if you look at the last, you know, five games we played. Dixie stayed on the road. We had them beat with <clears throat> about a minute to go, and they, they had, they had, their big kid hit a three. But, uh, Mesa, Colorado Mesa ends up winning the RMAC tournament. We were up one with uh, two minutes and 30 seconds left. So what I was trying to say is our team isn't far away. We needed to get – it's like a NASCAR race. We just needed to get to a pit stop where we can get some more gas in our car, add some more pieces uh, to the pieces we have because the pieces that we have coming back are very good. Mm -hmm. And we needed to add some complementary pieces that would help our team. Uh, and, and for the first time since our 2018 RMAC championship team, I feel like we have a really complimentary basketball team. Uh, and of course it starts with Riley in the middle, mm -hmm. but we, we have some really good pieces to play around. We have the right people. It's just a matter of practicing, uh, getting some continuity together and uh, getting ready to play. 
Ty, Bob, go a little more in depth with me on complimentary. What uh, you know? What do you mean by that? And it is, as far as you've got seven kids coming back who logged a lot of minutes, a dozen kids in, in general um, yeah. who know the system. So they know each other and, and uh, yeah, being able to compliment each other, obviously yeah. very important. So, so tell us a little bit, talk about the players and what they right. bring, what those returners are bringing. Looking at last year, we averaged 84 points a game, which is top 25 in the country mm -hmm. points per game. Uh, our field goal percentage offensively was 48%. Riley shot 58%, uh, which helps. So offensively, we're at the top of the league. Defensively, in rebounding wise, we are towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. So we really tried, knowing we had so many players coming back, our goal was to try to see, can we get some guys that can help us in our deficiencies, uh, knowing that we have other strengths. So we added uh, two junior college transfers that are going to be really good for us uh, rebounding defensively and just bringing good energy to the ball club. And that's Joey Nacarado and Tyler Kinghorn. Uh, Joey's a 6'5", 3'4", uh, from North Idaho's captain of a 28 and one team, junior college division. He played Division One first before he went to back to junior college, and we feel we really got a team captain type guy in him. Great energy, uh, selfless player, and then Tyler Kinghorn played at Hill Junior College in, in Texas, at one of the best junior college regions in the country. Six six, very good rebounder, athletic. So instead of uh, trying to make some of our new guys things that they aren't. Mm -hmm. We said, hey, let's try to get some guys that can balance it out. Now those two guys will help on some of the interior uh, and, and help Ferris and Riley and LaRose um, just with the rebounding. Because as you know in our league, if you see the guys up close, I mean, there's a lot of right. big guys. Right. And then we, we also brought in some guards. We brought in five total players, but Vanell Stafford's a, a, a junior college guard out of California that we feel can really help us. Um, our, our point guard position last year was decimated. Right. You know, Cesar Mo Molina breaks his leg. First game of the season, Logan Hoganson broke his, uh, a bone in his wrist that's still not completely healed. Right. So he's going to miss some significant time this year. Uh, we'll get him back at some point, but it won't be, okay. won't be in the first half of the season for sure. So, uh, but we, we've added some pieces that we think can really help. Um, but it's a huge piece. It would be like if you're making a puzzle. Well, if you already have a lot of the pieces of the puzzle, it's easy to go say, oh, we need that piece. And you go get it and you put the piece in and you try to make the picture what it is. It's a lot harder the year before when you only have three or four pieces back and you're getting a bunch of pieces and trying to put it together. You opened the box last year. That's right. Um, you've got most of the puzzle built and we're able to just find those last few pieces. And, and you're feeling confident that that's what you found. Last yeah, few no, I, we're, we're really happy with, with the players we, we brought in. And also what happens too is, is, is people forget natural progression from the returners, right? So anytime you've invested playing time mm -hmm. uh, in younger players, uh, when they come back, they're better. I mean, everybody gets better. It's hard to get worse uh, in our environment. So uh, not only do we add some new players, but we also have young men that are going to be better this winter than they were last. Okay. I want to talk about some of them when we come back. Coach yeah. Bob Petrack, we're going to take a break with him, and we'll be back with the Skyhawk Coaches Corner, brought to you by Centura Health, right after this. We know that there are certain sports that are more at risk to have ankle injuries, and so for my athletes in those types of sports, I'm often recommending not only preventative uh, fitness activities, but also stretching and maintenance exercises for proprioception, and even so far in some situations, preventative bracing or taping. And you're struggling with either a current injury or an injury from the past that's causing you to have pain and dysfunction, I highly encourage you to get over with Mercy Sports Medicine. The athletic trainers there are a great first line of contact for ankle injuries in general. And then also if you need a consultation here at Mercy Orthopedics with me, they can help that happen seamlessly. Welcome back to the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum. Bob Bonner alongside head men's basketball coach Bob Petrack. And we're going to jump right back into it. When we left for the break, uh, coach, you had been talking about some of the improvements uh, from the returning players. Uh, we're going to be joined by Riley Ferris a little bit later, and I'll grill him about where he thinks he, he improved in this offseason. Tell me about some of the other kids coming back and and some of the steps that, that you saw them take or, or some of the steps you're still seeing them take as, as you prepare for the season. We're talking about the returners. The first, the first one you'd bring up is Riley. Mm -hmm. um, as a coach, when you have that type of player returning, 
it, it does make things a little bit easier. It's not often that you have an All-American type talent on your team. So uh, it, it starts and stops with Riley with the returners. Feel good about Riley, feel good about his leadership. He's only getting, getting bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start looking at the other pieces we have. Will Whitman, who as a junior became a reliable starter. I think he averaged 11 points a game. And he's a borderline all league guy last year that we think uh, as he continues to improve his body, his athleticism, that uh, can be an all league caliber guy for us. Mm -hmm. A quell cot. We played two freshmen 50 minutes a game last year between mm -hmm. a quell cot and junior Garbra. And both of those young men, when you're 18, 19 years old playing in our league at the guard position and you're playing that many minutes, that's a, that's a tall task. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought both of them did a really nice job. A quell at 12 points a game. We've never had a freshman average that many points. And then junior Garbra, who <clears throat> at times last year uh, really stepped up and helped us. So those two guys only getting better, huge, huge for us. And then we really found something with Corey Sang last year towards the back 12 games. Mm -hmm. And Corey Sang was a transfer. Um, and as we were trying to figure out our team, uh, Corey just kept taking more minutes and more minutes and more minutes and, and feel really good uh, about Corey. Um, we also have great size. You know, not only do we have Riley, but Brandon Boatwright, who was the Gatorade Player of the Year in New Mexico at a high school. Uh, has had high expectations. He's a fourth year junior, and we feel he's really stepping into his own. And, and he had some really good moments. He's in the best shape he's ever been in. Uh, and, and we really think we got to find a way to play him and, and, and Riley together more, but really think Boat can be a force in our league. And then Brendan LaRose, he had some really good moments as a sophomore. He had positive moments. And, and as the calendar flips and he gets into his junior year, think that he can help us. So a lot of good returners feel good about where our guys are at, have a lot of trust in those guys. Uh, <clears throat> it's easy when you win together to feel good about your team. It's not always easy when you struggled at the end like we did to feel good about them, but really feel like the guys on our team, we have the right humans. And that's a big thing in college basketball. College basketball is so long and there's so much going on that you gotta have the right people. We have the right people, we've added good people. It's just a matter of putting the puzzle together and, and, and keeping our fingers crossed that the virus goes our way mm -hmm. and, and seeing if we can put a whole season together. But if, if we do, I feel really good about our team and where our program's headed. Um, obviously feel great about the players and the progress they've made in the off season. You know, you address the, the, the areas, uh, you know, you allowed a lot of points last year. You, were, you struggled with rebounding. Um, besides the players making, making their own improvements, is there anything you do systematically about that? Or, or, or do you just know that that's what teams are coming with and, and you've got to be better? Yeah, no, we got to be a lot better. And, and we'll change some things. We're a man-to-man -man program. I don't see that changing. Um, but what happened is, is we were young in spots. Uh, Logan played a, the whole year with a broken wrist, hard to guard when you can't touch anybody. Right. Um, and we changed systematically a little bit. We changed our four. Last year we had a stretch four and Danny Garrick, who I thought did a good job. Mm -hmm. We'll have more of a uh, rebounding, tough, junkyard dog type of four in the game more this year to help with the rebounding. But I think a lot of it, guys, last year was growing pains. Mm -hmm. um, and those happen. I mean, you're talking about a few bounces the other way. Right. And we're talking about a young team that won 17 games and is really – a in, heading in the right direction. Um, so that's where we're at. We think some of the new guys will, will help us defensively, but the, the, the returners, you get bigger, you get stronger, you get more comfortable. Um, other teams lose older guys. We were a very young team in a very old league. Now the flip, the, the script's flipping a little bit as we get older and some other teams get a little younger. Um, but schematically, we're gonna guard man to man. We need to do a better job of ball pressure. A lot of team shot you see the three-point percentage we gave up was really high. Mm -hmm. We're going to do better at getting ball pressure. Um, and there was times where we guarded good and just didn't get the rebound. Right. And that's, that's crippling. So we, we, we think we're going to be a better rebounding team. Uh, our program in the past has been a, a, a good defensive program. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had a blip last year, and we really couldn't fix much of it as much as we tried and, until we, and I use that NASCAR reference, we, we just needed to get to a pit stop right. and, and change some things, get some new tires. 
Uh, we didn't throw the whole car out. There's a lot of good pieces of the car. We just needed to fine tune some things and feel we did. I think that our defensive effort will be significantly better. And I think that we, we should be able to hold teams to 75 and under, which is our goal. Is there something in, in just uh, throw us a little, a, a little coaching 101 here. Uh, for, for the guys sitting at the table announcing the game and most of the fans watching it, teams shoot ridiculous three-point percentage yeah. against you. Everybody screams, close out, close out. There's more to it than that, though, when it comes to teaching a player to defend against a three-point shot, then you've just got to hustle more and close out, right? It, there's, it's spacing, positioning. There's, a, there's some education of a player that's involved there, and so having young players does, does tend to make that we were, a little more difficult. You know, as a coach, you never like to make any excuses because mm -hmm. that's just not how you do it. There were some miraculous shooting performances that happened last year that would not be repeatable if there was no one in the gym. Right. Um, so, but that's basketball. That's sure. how it works. Sure. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some games this year where other teams right. can't make any shots. And it comes if you coach long enough, you play long enough, it all evens out. But uh, collectively, we've got to have better ball pressure. Um, we, we've, we just can't give up threes. And we're going to do a better job towards the last little bit of the season. If you look at the last four games, we made some uh, some differences in our defense, and, and I thought we did a better job not giving up threes. But a lot of it is youth. I mean, sure. there's no, there's just like in any line of work. I mean, the only way to go through it is to get experience. So, um, knowing when to switch, knowing uh, everything, again, the, the spacing and, and the other stuff that goes into it. So feel good, feel good that it's all correctable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you add some pieces that'll help it. Uh, that'll help us. We were we we had good size in the middle. Right. We collectively we weren't very big, any other place. You know. So when you close out, if you're small, it doesn't. Sometimes right. it doesn't even make a difference. It just your guy goes over you. Right. He makes it. He makes it. So, um, but I, I think, you know, we're excited to sh we're, we haven't. You know, we don't talk much in our program. We like sure. to show. That's kind right. of our thing. So we're excited to show the 21st that we're better defensively. Meanwhile, still being one of the best offensive teams in the country. You talked about uh, just got a couple of minutes left. The script being flipped in the RMAC a bit this year. You're not the only team that got older and more experienced. There's a lot of other teams, like you said, that that lost key players. Give us your and and <laughs> Corona is going to throw a card, a card yeah. in there too. You know your feeling going in. Are are, are the perennial uh, powerhouses going to be tough again this year? Who's who, you know, what dates are you marking on the calendar? Which teams are you going to have to go to to get back to where you want to be? Right. This year? So, you know, I, I think Colorado Mines will be picked to win the league, and, and it probably as they should be. But for us, and, and we've been preaching it to our players, we're just really focused on us. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of good teams in our league. I mean, every year, especially this, this front range schools mm -hmm. um, in, in Westminster and Salt Lake, and they have a slight advantage, uh, travel advantage. They have a recruiting right. advantage with the, the – players being right there but really for us we feel if we take care of our business we get better internally uh, stay together which we have no issues with mm -hmm. we have a wonderful group of guys that we feel we can be with anybody yeah. and we really feel that and it's not a level of cockiness or anything like that it's just a level of belief in what we're doing and who we have how it shakes out oh man who knows how all that how all that goes but um, I thought we were competitive last year in every game and think we're going to go over the hump this year and get back to what we're used to. And um, barring injury, we've learned the hard way. My first three seasons, uh, we, we were injured never. Mm -hmm. We were just, we just didn't have any injuries. Uh, and then the last two years, there's been some injuries that are just, wow. Uh, and it can derail you, especially if it's in certain positions. Right. Because no one has that much depth. You just see it in the NFL right now where people are just dropping and you're like, hey, we, no one has that type of depth. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, feel, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the perennial powers in the league, who, whoever they are, they, they need to be prepared to play us because I, I feel like we're going to be competitive. Good. That's fun. Hey, they're giving me the signal to wrap up. Let's do a little rapid fire, though. We're going to talk sure. about the one. I'm going to give you a few questions, okay. and you tell me about the one. And the first one, and this from, uh, it's, it, I love doing this with the coaches because you pull from your playing career, coaching career from anywhere. The one shot you're never going to forget. Uh, I, I remember Josh Blaylock's uh, in, the, in the 2016 RMAC Championship game. He had two free throws, and he makes the first free throw to tie the game, and it's .3 seconds, and he, that, that second free throw is etched in my mind forever, and he made it, and we won that 16 cup. So. Okay. Second question, and, and answer could be the same. Uh, 
the one game that's going to be with you forever. You're never going to forget. The, yeah, the one game that sticks with me is in uh, 2017. We had lost the RMAC championship to Colorado Mines in, in heartbreaking fashion, really had won the game and gave it back up. And then the next night uh, or the next week, we played Tarleton State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And they were the three-time defending regional champions, and, and we beat them that night and, and stopped their streak. <clears throat> uh, and the only player left from that team is Riley. I think Riley had 12 points in that game. But um, that, that's the game to me. Uh, <clears throat> if you're talking like a Rocky Balboa mm -hmm. situation, yep. then that was the ultimate uh, – not an upset because I don't like to use that word because when you're an underdog you don't like right. to say upset but that was a special game uh, and now Tarleton's division one so okay okay uh, can't all be fun the one it, and I hate a word I hate to use yeah. is regret so give me the one do-over if you had it to as a player or a coach well the, I, the shot you wouldn't take the call you wouldn't yeah make, I would like to the one do -over. I'd like to redo the entire month of February last year <laughs> okay uh, you know you lose as many game close games as we did in February sure. and then on top of that you get to sit home with the virus situation going on and just sit there. Um, it'll, it's very humbling. I, I think there's this a good line. I, I think there's two types of, of coaches. There's the coaches that have been humbled and the coaches that are going to be humbled. Uh, I would definitely say that I'm, I've been humbled in a, in a lot of regards. But um, also, it, it, you know, if you, if you have a bump in the road, you have a chance to really reflect on yourself uh, and the program. So. Uh, I feel like we can turn that into a positive. But the month of February last year, something that... Tough one. You just soon give that one back. I wish the virus would have happened two months earlier and missed <laughs> that month. Well, let's swing back to a positive then. The one person who is uh, the reason you're, you're still in basketball, the reason you're, you're coaching the Fort Lewis Skyhawks now. Yeah, you know, if it was one person, I'd, you know, I'd say Coach Bob Hoffman, who I played for, and then it was an assistant for 11 years. Um, if it wasn't for him really none of us would be here it's almost like having like a patriarch of a family and right. you go down the tree and you're like well if he wasn't here and he wasn't here right. so i'd say coach hoffman i was very thankful for the opportunity to play and then he gave me a chance to to be an assistant and i learned a lot in my 11 years uh from him and we're you know we're pretty different type of guys but uh he taught me how to be a professional taught me how to coach taught me the things that I should be looking for and everybody has their unique right. ways of doing things right. and no two coaches are the same no two people are the same um, but uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of general philosophies uh, that I think he he mastered that he passed on to me like a father and a son so sure. I'd sure. say that coach Hoffman uh, if there was one person that I'm still sitting here today and, and, and feel like our programs had success I'd say it was because of him okay last question maybe not as fun maybe it is uh, kind of funny one. I always say, the one player, as a player or a coach, you're glad you're never going to have to see again. <laughs> the guy who just killed you. From the other teams. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That's, that is a good question. Uh, uh, we struggled with Derek White from UCC uh, Springs, and there were some great players from Metro. But, um, God, I really just don't like any of them. <laughs> and that might be but, the best answer. But I respect him. <laughs> nope, Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you to Bob Petrack for joining us. Hey, we're not done yet on the Skyhawks Coaches Corner. We're going to be back with senior Riley Ferris right after this. You can't stop the snow from falling, but you can make sure it doesn't slow you down. The Kubota Grand L Series, featuring an enclosed cab and all the snow removal equipment you need, is the ultimate package for outstanding performance, comfort, and taking on winter. Right now, get financing as low as 0% APR for up to 60 months, plus a six-year limited powertrain warranty. See your local Kubota dealer today. Southwest Ag, your Four Corners all-season equipment superstore, online at swagging.com. Welcome back to the Skyhawks Coach's Corner, presented by Centura Health. We are in the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum, joined now by men's basketball player Riley Ferris, a preseason All-American as selected by the Basketball Times Magazine this year. First of all, congratulations on that, Riley. Thank you. Uh, it, it, I'm going to actually read. I don't do a lot of reading on the show, but I'm going to read because I, <laughs> I couldn't possibly remember all this. First team all RMAC, second team all district, second team all region. 23.9 points per game last year, second in the conference, 12th in D2. Uh, and here at Fort Lewis College, we redid the record books over the summer. David and I go to GoSkyhawks.com. You can check that out. 
You're 15th on the all-time scoring list, 8th in blocks, 10th in field goals made. Um, year in and year out, one of the best field goal shooters in the conference. Riley, you are a gifted offensive player. Um, it's, it's fun to watch you play. How, how do you hone those skills? I, I mean, are you just a gym rat? Did you just sit in a driveway shooting your entire childhood away? Or how do you become the offensive player that you are? Uh, I think it goes back to my childhood. My dad was just always practicing with me in the driveway. We had a goal he put up for me, and I just spent hours out there. Really, with, with all those accolades, they're great, but the coaches and players have really done a great job of putting me in a great position to, to be successful in that regard, and without them, I wouldn't have any of these accolades. What are you so what, what do you do to top that? What, what's your goals for this year? Is, is it to top that individually, or, or do we go back to what you were just talking about, you and the coaches and the team getting something done? What, what's your goal this year? To win the RMAC is always the number one goal. It's uh, always great to get individual goals, but the main reason I'm here is to bring an RMAC championship and bring this program back to where it was, and I think we got a, a good deal going this year. Coach Petrack alluded to the fact that, that you're one of the players on, on the roster. There's not many. Um, you're, as a matter of fact, you're the guy. You remember those RMAC championship yes. games. Um, going without him for a couple of years has, tell me how tough it's been. You, you probably thought it was a birthright. Um, you got to play in, in those right. tournament games all the time when you first got here. Right. You've gone two years without him. How hungry does that make you? Oh, I mean, it makes me very hard. I think about it almost every day. Every time I go to practice, what can I do to be better for the team? And what can I do to help us win? I think it's always on my mind. I mean, this whole summer has been Colorado Mines 21st. Hopefully we'll get to play. But yeah, ever since that, I mean, it's, it's always on my mind. <laughs> How do you, uh, do you share that with the other guys? So what it was like <laughs> playing in, in the tournament, playing in those championship games, is that something that you're dangling in front of your teammates all the time? Is, uh, is, is that present that's waiting to be open Christmas day if you can just do this, this, and this? <laughs> yeah, do you tell them about it? Well, I'm getting goosebumps right now <laughs> thinking about it because really I just tell them those teams were just really good fundamentally and just good teammates. Mm -hmm. They were just so good playing together. Um, the talent, we, I think we have a lot more talent than we did in those teams, but the way they played, the way they played for each other is what really what brought it together. And I think if we do those things, it'll be really successful here. So you're saying you truly believe, you and your teammates, that you have right now are, are good enough to win an RMAC championship? Oh, yeah. And with the people the coaches have brought in, uh, they really meshed, meshed together really well with what we're doing and really couldn't ask for better people right now and better defensive help, honestly. Defensive help was something that mm -hmm. obviously, you know, in, in, and I'm with coach. That's, that's last year. <laughs> we've, we've done all that. We talked to coach about it. You know, tell me a little bit though, as, as player, you talked about I think what you were getting to was, was sort of the bond that those teams had. And, and uh, Coach talked about complimentary players, but how players complement each other on the floor. Mm -hmm. As a senior leader, is that, you know, how, how, are you, how are you trying to help your teammates do those intangible things that don't show up on the stat sheets that, that lead to championships? What, what are you doing to help them? And, and, and what have all of you said is, is sort of those intangible goals that you, that you all have to do a little better this year? Really, it comes from the mental side, I think. Um, being able to get those loose balls, get those balls that are hard, but those those things win championships. Mm -hmm. You try to preach it every day, practice it every day in practice, and uh, just try to get better every day. And I think with that and, and those, and we keep going we're, with the way we're going, it's going to be really good. How tough has it been to to come back uh, with COVID and in in the bond and do you know you aren't able to do the things that uh, as, as coach said college is different so obviously being a college basketball player is different uh what are some of the challenges and what have you and the guys done to overcome them first off in the summer i mean we usually do a good job of staying here and being together and whatnot it's, that's been a challenge but coming back I, we try to keep our circle tight as possible and we do hang out as much as we can we do what we can but really that practice is what really what makes it and practice has been good oh since yeah you've been practice, back. practice has been good with the new guys they really brought a, a certain type of energy okay. and swag i think to the team i think that's what is uh i think it's some of the best practices we've had since i've been here is the swagger you guys score a lot of points yeah. um so i i felt uh, my first year around the program last year i felt like like you guys had some swagger and shit uh, offensively that's what everybody comes to see in basketball 
but you've talked about the defense. Is this a, is is this swagger that you're talking about this year? A little more of an edge, a little tougher feel to it. Definitely tougher. Definitely a new level of tough, toughness with the new guys. What they brought. Honestly, um, can't say enough about them. They've just made us a better team as a whole, and so far, and I'm really looking forward to getting back into it with them when the games come November 21st. Is uh, you know, there's a saying, talk about sayings, old sayings with coaches a second ago. One of my favorite is everybody's got a game plan until they get punched in the mouth. Um, my gosh, teams are going to come in here thinking that they can roll um, on, on you guys. Are you looking forward to presenting that tougher swagger to them? Oh, yeah. I mean, they think, I, I would imagine they think we're pretty soft at the moment. Okay. And they have a reason to believe that we're L9, but I think with what we have right now, there's going to be a new level of toughness that you haven't seen in a couple of years. Nice. Honestly. That's going to be fun to see. Hey, let's wrap this up by having a little fun. We'll do a little rapid fire with you about the one. You saw Coach did it, so you've had a couple of minutes to think about right. it. Start it off. Tell me about the one shot you're always going to remember from your career so far. Hopefully there's one coming that's going to be even better. But so far, what's the one shot you're oh, always going man. to remember? The one I'm going to remember. And this tougher for you because you've hit a is. lot of them. <laughs> Oh, man. Honestly, I was there for that 2017 with Josh mm -hmm. and just watching the way he played. And the shot, he made so many great shots. But like he said in that Armac championship game, I mean, he just, that one shot he did, it was just unbelievable. Nice. How he about one Top game? of the three. How about one game? Is that your one most memorable well, game? I can or remember. You got a different one? Um, for me personally, it was, uh, might have been my sophomore year. Okay. Uh, at Highlands, I just, I didn't miss all game. I went 12 for 12. So that's probably the game I remember and the shots I remember the most of those, from those games. That's just the way you envisioned it at night when you're sitting around, isn't <laughs> the it? visualization, yes. All right, the one that's not so fun, the, the do-over. Which, which, which shot or which game, which, which one do you wish you had back? Last year, last game at Adams State, um, just to win the game, I made a mistake. Um, at the end, that's, I should have passed it to Will Whitman to go into them, but I took a shot and I thought it was the best shot at the moment, but I know I should have done better in that moment. So I think get us the win, but that's probably the one I okay. would take back. Give you a little extra fuel for this yes. year. Another yes. one of those moments. The one person who, uh, who, who put you where you are today, who's the reason you are preseason All-American Riley Ferris, who's responsible for that? The coaches, the players, but I would say most importantly, my parents have always been there for me and really helping me along with the mental side. And that's a big thing I tried to change this off season. Okay. It was the biggest part of it and really getting going in that area. Okay. Who's one player in, in your career you faced, you're glad you never have to face again, or maybe he's still out there. Maybe, and, and we probably don't want to tell him if he is, but so who's the one that you're glad you never have to see again? I would say maybe from Highlands, Marlon, Marlon Johnson, I think it might have been his name. He's just a big six, nine, six, 10, that would just dribble the ball all the way up and down the court. And it's just, just a different feel having a guard of six, 10, that would dribble and shoot and do all the little things that he did. Nice. Glad he's not around. Right, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Riley, thank you for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun and good luck this season. Get started November 21st when South Dakota Mines hits the gym and sure. you guys take them on. That'll do it for the Skyhawk Coaches Corner presented by Centura Health. Uh, welcome to... I'll shoot their clothes over again. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't tell what you were doing. All right. What were you trying to signal me, Dave? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy yeah, Thanksgiving. We're, we're going okay. to be off next week for Thanksgiving. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry, Riley. I'll do this real quick this time. <laughs> That'll do it for the Skyhawks Coach's Corner presented by Centura Health for this week. We'll be off next week for Thanksgiving. But when we come back in December, we'll be talking about football, volleyball, and all things Skyhawks athletics. Thanks to Al and the gang at the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad for hosting the show. And we look forward to seeing you all when we return after the holiday. Until then, keep soaring.